Good morning, everyone. Uh, again, today it's uh, another beautiful day out there. I have my special guest here, uh, Kualo, which is uh, the wife of my uncle. We are we're related. I didn't know that we relate until recently when we met about a year ago. You know, our Vang family is very huge, so uh, I'm glad that we, we relate to each other. But today, today I have uh, uh, my special guest here, uh, Wolo. Uh, she's also a shaman. As many of you heard her story about her, her journey, uh, when she started her spiritual journey. And also, she's also a film producer and director. But today we're gonna, I'm gonna help uh, well, here we're going to talk about uh, how she started beginning writing books. And, and she's going to share her, her um, techniques or, or know-how, how she started. And she can give some advice to some of you who, who are thinking about publishing your own book. So, and I just quickly show you this is the book that she recently published. And I... And I uh, you know, I, I read the book and it's very interesting, it kept me going, uh, even though I'm, I was very busy, but I tried and, and I believe it took me about three, four days to finish this book. You know, because you are a good reader, uh, then me, you can finish this book in, well, I would say, four or five hours. And a and very, very uh, interesting book, even though it has some fiction and nonfiction in there, it will keep you uh, uh, captivate you until you finish the end. But today I'm gonna uh, just ask who are here to uh, talk a little bit about writing. Okay, so welcome, Hua, for uh, to uh, uh, my talk today, and uh, you can feel feel free to introduce yourself, and then we can talk more about writing. Hey, thank you, Nzo. Thank you for having me um, on board here today. And uh, I am really happy that you're sharing stories for everybody to hear. And so I'm really grateful that you have invited me again to, to come talk with you. And um, again, Nzo had already mentioned, but my name is Hua. I reside in Minnesota here. Uh, my husband and I, we have six kids together. And um, this book that we are going to be talking about is my third published book. And so I'm just here to share experiences about how to get your foot in through the door in the writing world and what to expect, what not to expect, and um, the all the pride and joy that comes with, with writing a story and getting it out. So thank you for allowing me to come on and share my story. Well, thank you because I'm sure the audience will love to hear your story. We, you know, I have, have, have went to a lot of uh, bookstores, especially uh, Mong ABC, which is owned by Yu Peng Xiong. You know, I, we have a lot of documentaries, uh, books, and, uh, and, and how many of those books were written in, in a way for mostly for history. But your book is, it's a fiction, not fiction. If people read this book, they're gonna say, is it really true? But many of them are were true. But it just, it just, it just, uh, it, it just maybe, maybe you don't have the real character in there. Okay. But uh, let, let's start with the, the idea of becoming a, a, an author. When did you discover that you have this uh, uh, passion for writing? When did you discover that? Well, I've, I've always been writing since I was, you know, very young. And I started out writing in diaries. And I have my own collection of diaries and journals. I have over a hundred of those that I, I keep. And it's from when I was a little girl and I've always written in it, um, even things that happen, things that don't happen. And I've always written in it and just kind of shared my thoughts about what it was about. And my teachers have always, um, you know, even as a little kid, my teachers would read the, read the journals that I've written and they've, they've told me, oh, you're really good at this. You're really good at writing this. You should continue with this. And I always, you know, continue through it until I got married and then I got really busy, became a mother and I just kind of left it hanging there. Although I did journal every single night, it wasn't the same anymore. I didn't have that, that passion, that drive to continue writing. And my husband was one that always you know, whenever I would sit and I would write just for fun, he would read my stories and he would say, you know, you need to do something about this. You know, somebody would, would love to read your stories. You should do it. And so, 
And then it began the, the process of getting my book out there, which was a horrendous three year process <laughs> because I was a very new writer. Nobody knew who I was. No one had never heard of me. I have this little folder on my computer called rejection. <laughs> and in this folder called rejection, I got my first, my first, my very first book called Eclipse of the Heart. That book was rejected by 300 publishers. <laughs> so 300 publishers said to me, you are a horrible writer. You should go get a job. You, you know what you're writing? Nobody would ever read. And whoever told you that you are a good writer, they, they are a liar. They lie to you. You should go get a job. You should go get a job. Go get a job that doesn't require you to write. And when I first heard that, I cried. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, and when publishers, when they, when they first read your book, their first thought is, can we make any money out of this? Of is anybody point. going to read? Yeah. That's the first part is, is anyone ever going to read your story? Can we make money out of it? Can we brand this, this author? And when they first saw me, they said, no, we can't brand this woman. We don't even know who she is. She's a nobody. So um, yeah, it, it was a hard process. 300 people said to me, you, you're really bad at writing. You should just go get a job. <laughs> and so it's, um, in writing before, no one will, no one will give you the benefit of the doubt. They will all tell you that you should go just get a regular job. So that was my first beginning of, of writing. Yeah, you don't have a title behind you. You don't have a, 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 any academic background. Say, yeah, people are going to uh, read your book. Uh, you know, I, I can imagine that 300 rejections. Who read your book that don't understand you? <laughs> you <know what> I <laughs> Yeah, of course, of course, when they when they uh, when they read the book, because they're gonna put time there, effort there, they're gonna try to uh, they're gonna they, they the bottom line they can say how much money can we make like you say how much money can we make on the uh, on, on on this book, and the the audience itself who will be the audience, so they don't see the audience as mm -hmm. you know, like that any business. Even though you give them the opportunity, say, you know, the big audience, the, the market is there, they say, no, we don't see your market. Right. Yeah, that, that, that's the, the, the thing about, you know, even going into writing is sort of like what you said, it is like business, you know, you have to really um, have built up followers, have built up people who actually have read your work, and then be able to understand what kind of writer you are before it can actually take flight. Well, Tom, thank you for joining us this morning. So uh, uh, I know you 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 give chat, you uh, send out a chat message to who are on Facebook. So thank you for coming out this morning and uh, listening to our our talk. We just start talking about her, her journey as a, as a, as an author. So welcome, question yes. uh, as long as we 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 talk here. Okay, feel free to uh, ask. Sure. Them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Now let's start with your first book. Uh, what 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 is the title again? The first book that you uh, that you uh, uh, published was it a successful book or uh, you know how how's the what's the feedback you got on your first book for? So the very first book I wrote was called Eclipse of the Heart, and that one was a fictional romantic book. And it's about um, a couple who had a shotgun marriage and it ends up with the wife leaving the marriage because she has an affair with a man who happens to appreciate her. And the husband later on learns that he was wrong in so many ways. So this one was one of the very hardest one to get published. And like I said, you know, it was rejected over and over again. And um, I ended up going with Doris Publishing and they picked me up and um, I still remember it was in 2012 and 
I saw the mailbox, the mailman go by and uh, I was like, okay, someone's here. They, they deliver mail. Let me go see what it is. And so I go out there and there's, it came out in this like big manila folder and it said addressed to my name. And so I opened it up and it said, Doran's Publishing, we would like to publish your book. And I just sat down by the mailbox and, I <laughs> and you know, I had neighbors that, you know, were walking by and they were looking at me like, what is going on with her? Why is she crying by the mailbox? And I just stood up and I said, oh, it's just a really good day, you know? And then I walked back in and um, it took, the process took about four months for the editing team and the design team and everything to work out. They gave my, my book to two people to review and I got uh, four out of five stars, which I thought, you know, was okay. And the book, if you are interested, it is available on Amazon. So if you just go look up on Eclipse of the Heart by Holor, it's on Amazon, you can purchase it from there. And uh, so that one was one of the books that really kind of paved my way into getting into writing. Um, was it a successful hit? Did I make a lot of million? No, I didn't. <laughs> I you just still, get your name out there, right? <laughs> I just got, I got, you know, my, I got a book with my name on it and that I published a book, you know, and a lot of people, they go into writing thinking that, oh, you know, if I sell, if someone publishes my book, I'm going to become a millionaire the next day. It doesn't work that way. You know, um, there's, there's so many people who will look at your book, they'll read it and they'll pass it on to someone else to read it. And then that person may not have the same feeling and it's okay. You know, everybody has their entire their own opinion. So um, the, the number one thing that I always tell everybody is as long as at the end of the day, you got to share your story with somebody and someone got to read your story and understood where you come from. And if they, if, if they were able to pick up something really important from that, then you succeeded in making this world a better place. So how many, how many uh, books that being uh, being sold um, at, at, on the first book, Eclipse of the Heart? Eclipse yeah. of the Heart, um, I had about 500 that were sold. Mm -hmm. And um, the second one was, the second one sold more because the second one, my, uh, it's, a, it's a story based on so that one that one picked up about another uh, 500 so i sold about a thousand copies in that one we need to we need we need to work more 500 is not enough especially for Hmong community that's yeah. what i have to be like that's why we have this kind, this kind of talk by like this morning you know you, when you pour your heart in there you know you put everything your thought process and writing editing and you know Hearing that, you know, yeah, it's, it's not writing for about Hmong, but, you know, Hmong, we should be able to say, okay, we're going to make, we're going to buy the first, well, make sure we buy the first thousand or two thousand uh, published books already. I don't care whether, whether it, it is, a, I, I hate to use the word, I don't care, but, you know, we wanted to use the word supportive, supporting, you say, okay, I'm going to buy that. Like who here, $17? Right? Is this is seventeen dollars? No, it's just it's 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 a thousand dollar. Not it's you put so much in there. You know the thought process, the writing, the editing, and the story is is very well um, uh, written. Like I mentioned to you, talk to you earlier, it kept me uh, my kept 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 doing it my. Uh, me want to want to read more until the end of the chapter, uh, and seventeen dollars, we could we could do better more. We could do better, and those of you here, my talk I'll talk this morning with Juan. I really suggest you go pick your own book. Say, read it, read it. You know we need to get your your books big so at least five thousand copies out there. We have come on, we have. I have 400,000 monks in America here, okay? But this is just my personal thought. You know, most people may not, other may not agree with me. But at least, you know, the first 500 so, and you still have the motivation to write a second book. That's, that's a, lot of, a lot of courage for you. You say, you know what? I'm gonna write it because that book will be there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is the second book that you wrote that was, uh, 
to write about Hmong now. Uh, what, what is that book about? So the second one is called Tomorrow, Teki. Mm -hmm. And um, that book I wrote, um, it's a shifting character book. So it's based on a woman who is dying. She's, she's on her deathbed, she's dying. And she decides to tell her life story to her daughter about why she never loved her father, about why and so she tells a story of why and at the end her daughter realizes that her mother was just a human being who she never knew and um that one i know that tong bought that one tong and pam bought that one and um, <laughs> <laughs> and i really do appreciate your guys' support on that and it was a book that you know i wrote and i dedicated it to my father-in-law because there was a lot of things that he said that I put in there. And um, when he was alive, when he was living, he really taught me to really shape myself, not just as a woman, but as a person. And I put a lot of what he said to me into there, into the, the character, the character of the, the dad in there, I, I weaved it around him. So you can see in that story that he's somebody who is a very big hearted, a very genuine, ambitious person. And that's exactly who my father-in-law was. So I shaped that around, around that in there and you get to see a lot of him in there. And so that book, um, that book is still, it's available on Amazon too. So if you look up Tomorrow with Taki by Holo, you can still order it from Amazon as well. Okay. Oh, so you bought that book. <laughs> you bought the second book by Tom? Can you unmute yourself? Yes, yes. Pam yeah. and I bought the second book and we read it. It's pretty good. I like it. How many days take you to, uh, to, to, to finish the book on that book? <laughs> um, it's been it took a while, me like right? a week to finish it. Yeah, a week, but it's been a while. I don't really remember much. It's been a while. That was the time when um, there was a celebration uh, <clears throat> at a banquet somewhere, and um, we got it. But um, it's been a while. But I just, I just want to say that you know, I, I believe that it might be a good idea for a starter, uh, for writers who are starting out to publish short stories in uh, a collection in other collection books, so that. Um, you can start to get your name out there for publishers to recognize some of your work before you uh, go into like a book publishing, like a really, really long book. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, have better chance of being um, accepted to uh, publish your book. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, that's a good idea. Yeah. And later on, we'll, I, will, I will give you some topics, some subject to ask. Uh, some idea for you to work writing on, okay? Uh, <laughs> like I told uh, who are earlier, is, and then Tom, you've been working with me for the last 10 years. And you know that I'm very, very, um, I, I consider myself visionary, uh, I, you know, I'm more like architecture. So when we speak, I can say, okay, this would be something that you should be working on. I'm not afraid of getting out my ideas, whether they, People take it or not. I'm just gonna throw out and say, hey, you, you, this is something might, you might, it might be good for you. Uh, just remind me at the end or toward the end of it. I was, I give you my thought if I forget about it. So that was the second book. How about the? Uh, so it's getting easier now. How? how again, the second book take you how long to uh, start from the beginning till finish? Till you send to publisher and they say, okay, it's it, it's okay now. It's in public, uh, uh, available in public now. How long does it take? Um, so the second book I wrote it and it took me about a month to write and I went with the same publisher again, Dorrance. So because they had picked me up on the first one, they were able to, they were willing to, to pick me up again on the second one. So that was a really easy process and it took only about another two months before the book came out. Um, but then again, you know, like what Tong was saying, um, everybody didn't really know who I was yet. And so it sold better than the first one, but I was still kind of a dark shadow and not everybody kind of knew who I was. And that was when I started adding blogging. So I started blogging and um, building up audience. And then that was when things started to really pick up. And 
in my blogging, I wrote short stories, I wrote poetry, Mongtia, a uh, English poetry as well, and then started getting hits. And then that was when things were getting just easier and easier because people started knowing who I was. Yeah, I can see that you are very, very good in blogging. You know, blogging is something I knew. I, 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 I discovered the word and said, what the heck they call blogging? <laughs> Blogging, you know, I try to find in dictionary, it still doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Until we start looking, start doing it, I say it was so simple. It's just simply just give out a message, right? Just yeah. simple thing. It, it's just more like a, just go ahead and uh, gossip your, your story out there. Yeah. Book, uh, mm -hmm. But they don't call it gossip, they just call blogging, you know. <laughs> but let, let's talk about the, uh, let's talk a bit about uh, cost. And so financially, uh, the first book, how much it cost you money wise uh, to, to get your book to a publishing? How much on your part? How much on their part? Okay. Oh. Um, <clears throat> so, Dorrance is a self publishing company. Mm -hmm. They don't require you to have an agent, they don't require you to have anybody to represent you. And that's one of the things about getting yourself published into a company is that when you go with um, a big publishing company, if you don't have an agent to represent you, they're going to think that you're not good enough. So they're not going to read anything that you write. And when submitting anything that is a manuscript, if they say unsolicited material, that means that if you don't have an agent who actually sends it to the company, they're not going to read it what they do is they just end up throwing it into the garbage. So you can send them a really nice manuscript with you, you put all your heart and soul into it. And if it's unsolicited, they just toss it right away. They don't even, they don't even open it up. And I learned that the hard way was that I didn't know that unsolicited meant that you needed an agent and getting yourself in, an agent means that the agent actually takes commission from your sale books. So you got what the come what only can get to agent and no you can't do the more than that. But then the agent's job is to help you get your books published, even though it comes at a hefty price. So it kind of depends on how how you see yourself in this. Do you want to go really far? Do you want to have somebody represent you, or are you just trying to get your foot in the door and then build up from there? So you have got you have to work out there. Okay, I right now I don't have anything. And if they take everything that I have, I'm going to be left with just my name. I would suggest going with self-publishing and just self-publish your book and get your name out there, build up your audience and then go from there. If you're thinking, okay, I don't care. I have, you know, my bank account is full. I'm okay. And if an agent can represent you, go with an agent. And an agent will be able to get you with a publisher who actually uh, back off it on. So um, cost wise, it costs between 10 to about 20 grand. On your end, getting the book out, uh, paying the editors, paying um, like your, your design team. Once they, once they accept your book, they take into consideration, okay, who are we going to assign her? We, we assign uh, a project manager, we assign an editor, we assign a design team to create everything, and we assign a marketing team. So all that money that you will be paying is paying for the team. Right? And if you go again with the same company, they will reduce that cost because they know who you are. Um, so those two first ones, I went with Dorrance, and that was kind of the cost that I had to incur with me. Uh, with well, third book money in your genre because I went with um, her publisher, so that was a, that was a different story. But we buy well, all the first company in here. We buy into my Mikana, get like a cost you learn curly there. When they talk about third book already, so let's just talk the cost for the uh, the, third pub the second publisher that you see for her publishing. Now, is this a cost still same or much less less for compared to the the first one it's much less um it's much less instead of you know going between 10 to 20 it falls into 5 to 10 so it's a lot less yeah so so I can, so in that case and if somebody who are totally brand new just publish your first book just just go with her publishing um, 
and they will be able to do what the other publishers do as well, right? Mm -hmm. Walk you through designing, and they have the editor for you too. Yes, they have. They will select an editor for you. They will mm -hmm. also select a design team, someone to help you come out with what kind of cover do you want. Um, and they also have somebody who will write your biography for you, somebody who will write the back cover for you. And once they do, they do all of that, they send you a draft. And in that draft, you read through it, everything. And they'll have the editor to make more changes. Anything that they've changed, they'll highlight it. And you read it, and if you like it, you keep it that way. And if you don't, then you'll just say, you know, please put this back to the way how it was. And it's kind of like a back and forth process of you polishing it, them polishing it. The way how you write it is you write it towards how you feel. The way how they edit it is they edit it so that it can actually survive in the marketing world. So they, to them, it's a product. To you, it's something personal. So that's why, like, your editor, mom, when they when they look at it, they look at it as a piece of work. You tend to look at it as something personal. And I think that's why it's really hard on me because I, I hate editing. The one reason is because I never want to erase anything I wrote because I want to keep editing. <laughs> and that's not, always, that's not always the right thing to do. You know, that's not always the right thing to do. You have to edit. You have to, you know, cut it down. You have to slim it down and make sure that it's unnecessary things. We don't need it in there. So when it, it's kind of hurtful for you when you read it and they say, okay, this doesn't need to be in there. This doesn't need to be there. And you want to show you that, but I really like this part. And they're like, no, it doesn't make sense. Because you, if you keep this in there, you're going to have to write another part about why you kept that in there. And then it's going to add and add and add. And then your story is going to be longer and longer and longer. And it has no end. In a way, their, their suggestions do make sense. Because it, it's kind of like, you know, like how when we do films, you know, and, and I know Tom can, you know, um, piggyback on this. When you do films, you take out scenes that don't make sense. You don't want to keep everything in there because at the end of it, your movie is going to be four hours long and it doesn't make any sense. So that's why even with writing, you have to slim it down. And I'm really bad at editing because it's my story. So I, I really like to keep everything. And it's really good that they, they take somebody who doesn't know anything about you, doesn't know anything about your book, and they're simply just reading and they take out stuff that they think it shouldn't be in there. And then at the end of that, they have a really nice finished product for you. And this is why they are called editors because they're able to take all these out without feelings. Whereas they can all wait your shona, you pay one little, you don't go pay one more you don't go pay one more share. I understand that because when I uh, have my editor uh, editing my book that I didn't publish, when I mentioned to you that I did uh, put one back in 2006. I so said, when I gave to my auditor, editor and he removed a lot of things out, it doesn't make sense. I said, what did he, what did Peter got there I wrote here? What did <laughs> you want to put it back, but you don't want to put it back because it doesn't connect anymore. Yeah. So attached to uh, your, you 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 uh, said, that's my idea. I, I should, why did he take that out? So I, I can understand what you, from your standpoint. So. Now, let's talk a bit about uh, my, my uh, planning, writing the book from mentally prepared to writing, reserve time for writing. Uh, can you give advice for those who, who, uh, who say, I got an idea, I want to write about it. What what they need to prepare? How do they, uh, uh, how do they mind mapping themselves writing the, the, the book? Sure. Um, so for me, everybody writes a little bit differently. Everybody has their own process of how they start, how they finish. Um, for me, I'm the type where if you ask me what I'm writing, I never know what to tell you what I'm writing. I don't know. But then when I sit down and I start writing, then I know what I'm writing. So I'm that kind of writer. Um, but for me, one thing that has helped me is, that has helped me a lot is, don't start out by giving your book a title. Just leave it blank. If you don't have a title for it, just leave it blank. Because as soon as you already name your book and you don't even know what it's about yet, you're going to you're gonna write the book and then you're going to be like, but it doesn't have anything to do with the title. So start out, <laughs> start out with a title. Okay, don't title your book at all. 
And don't worry about that. That can come later because only go high. You got this is more being more a equal title role. Go put on a got your show. You play a question show. So maybe like 40 pages and you're going to be like, but it doesn't make sense to the title. It has nothing to do with it. So, so start you're gonna, off. You're going to yeah. delete the chapter. It's going to be bright. Exactly. Yeah. So just start off with even if you don't have a title, just start off with untitled. Um, keep like a planner, like a notebook and write out all your characters names if you are writing characters. And this is really helpful because maybe this character that you have only comes out like every four or five chapters and you're you've been you've been writing and you're on chapter 10 and you forgot what her name is so then you have to go back like 40 pages and figure out what is her name so if you have a book like a notebook by your side that says okay the hero hulina tuna e hulina um to a netai to jai hulina onana even stuff like that and then if you forget her name you can just look at the book and, and say okay this is her name instead of having to scroll through four four 40 50 pages and read it okay what was her name what was her name for me i also write down like descriptions the hair color what kind of attitude she has what kind of clothes she likes so that if i have to rewrite her re, re uh, enter her her character back into it i know exactly who i am working with another thing is i don't really like to name my characters with the same uh beginning the, the names that starts with the same letters so if i have a character that is her name is kathy I'm not going to make her best friend Christine because it's both K. On my day, sometimes I forget who's Christine and who's Kathy. So I usually have their name very different where if Kathy and I eat on a gay, her best friend would be something like Nicole. Because this way it separates Lutantona and it makes them separated. Um, another advice is always write about yourself in there. Include a little bit of you in your story because if you don't include that, it doesn't become real. And when it's not real, if you read it and you don't believe it, everybody else who reads it, they're not gonna believe it either. So in all the stories that I've, I've, I've written, even if it's just like a little poetry or a little blog or anything, I always include something of myself in there. And if you got, if you, if anybody who knows me, okay, that's who right there. That's, she's <laughs> writing about her. <laughs> this is a little bit involved with your uh, shamanism. Yes. <laughs> Because you you were speaking to talk about the wall, talking to looking in the pictures, you know, listen, hearing the, the the sound of thing, you know. So that you 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 they, when they read your book, they say, is she a shaman or something? Is she? Because you eat to show that. So so that means you 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 spice it up your book. Yeah. So so you know, I, I guess the word is spice up, right? So, yeah, you know, it's not too dry, okay? Because you know, when I read this book, I just say, "Please try to get it, lead this story, this this phrase into his." And I, when I read the next uh, next next chapter, oh, it makes sense. That's that's why he she ended up with this part. And 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 when I when I uh, when I uh, read when the uh, the sound cool, right? Mm -hmm. It they talking uh, and, and I say, why, why would that sound would be able to play the same tune as her first boyfriend? How could that be possible? I said, now get my, get my imagination, imagination why I say, okay, it, I, got, I got to finish this story because it's, it's something behind. Because it's, it's not easy for somebody to just uh, uh, play the same tune. And, and have, have the same spiritual connection when she saw that boy or that young man play that tone. Even though that young man's already in her, this 30, play the same tone as her first boyfriend. So mm -hmm. something like this is to captivate me to read, okay, I want to know more, I want to know more. Uh, even, even, even when uh, the, the uh, even her husband want to bring her her son back to America, and I say, huh, okay, now that's that's battle between the the, the, the first boyfriend and her, her her husband. How they gonna how they gonna handle each other? Are they gonna kill each other? Are they gonna get a gun a knife? Are they gonna kill each other? Because you know when you heard about your wife 
you know, imagination as men, say, my wife slept with another man before me? See, that's, that's, that's the first thing. Because if, if, if uh, she never had intimacy with the first boyfriend, she would never really have that kind of thought process. I keep thinking throughout the years, even 30 years, that's still lingering in her mind. Her saying, okay, still have a nightmare. So your book in here, you know, again, I'm not reading you guys' story. If you want to, you better get your own. And I'm going to read for you on, on here. And, 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 and that and is something that I see in you, say, you know, your, when you say your characters at a, uh, write in a way where you do not confuse other. Yes, I, I do. Uh, I do, uh, I do agree with you that uh, you should boost the first character out there, the first name that's close together because uh, even the author will confuse himself or herself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that that's one of the things I learned very early on was just to to make sure that all your characters that you design are a little bit different from each other because you can't have, you know, the hero be somebody whose name is, you know, this, and then the one that the, the lady who was trying to take her boyfriend looks exactly the same with this kind of the same name too. And then that kind of just interferes the story. So as, as an author, you have to really design your story and your book to make people, to capture them and to have, to captivate people to make them want to read more and more and um that was one of the the really harder things for me in the beginning was i i didn't really i didn't really know like too much different names and so what i ended up doing and this is something you guys can do too is i bought i went to the thrift shop and i bought a baby book name okay it was a baby a name for babies and it had like tons of names girls boys from like letters a through z and I set it beside me. So whenever I'm writing a story, I can say, okay, what kind of name can I come up with this? And then if you can't think of a name, you have your baby book name to look onto and you just flip through the pages and then know exactly what name you can pick and you write it down. Another way too is, you know, to keep a dictionary and a thesaurus right by your side. So if you decide, okay, I don't know how to describe this character in a way that makes her unique. What's another word for pretty? You can look onto your thesaurus and then use that word and implement it so that your description of that character really meets the way how you really want it in your mind because in our mind we we as a writer we know exactly what that character looks like but it's our job and it's our creativity to make the readers actually believe that that character is the way how we see it in our head that's the challenge is that we can say oh no 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 I, I, I don't I don't see much. So you have to add stuff like maybe that she always misses a button. She never buttons her top button. Her hair is always as always out of place. Maybe the pie always has to tuck her hair behind her ear. You know things like that, and it lets her know that she's a messy character. And she doesn't take a look at how she's dressed. Or even the pie, you know, you talk about his masculinity smell. He has a spicy smell to him that makes him attractive. And then this adds in like it just that that person just becomes real. It just becomes like a real person instead of just a character that that you are um, reading. So those are just certain things that you can keep in mind. about names uh, is in my feedback for you for example your name okay your name let's say if you uh, in future books you're gonna use a long name as you using like, uh, like uh, on this one if you use mm -hmm. uh, or what is perfectly for people who are born in Laos or Thailand mm -hmm. Are you still using the word my hua or my hua? Those are the names in America here. Mm -hmm. okay? Because in America, we tend to have more like uh, go hua, go jua, uh, nu ti, uh, nu lai. Uh, so the name that after uh, our children in America here, it's, it's, it's I call it here. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's more prettier, more the the, the name has more uh, uh, meaning to it. As I talk to my some other friends, and they not really agree with me, but like like Tom's name, right? It, it, and it, you know, it's a, it's a good name. But if you're gonna really give the explanation, boom, you know, it's it's a piece of metal. It's a good one. Okay. So, if like they have, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, it's 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 it, it's good. But come on, why do you have to also say my name with 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 a ilu ilu yeah ilu part the cooking part. Like, like, how come you don't name my name as better? Why, why you call me like a mountain? So when, when you are, uh, you know, in the next book, when you use your character, let's say they were born in Laos. So you, it's a single name. If you come to America and you, know, you, 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 especially the lady's name, then it, it's more prettier, more fancier, more, more. So, I said the, the children, let's say your children, and they have this name now. Okay? Okay. Just my, it's just my feedback to you so to think about back in time. Okay? Now, how much to talk about the book uh, on uh, outline again? How much time you uh, spend or Schedule yourself to writing the your story on a, on a weekly or the daily basis. How much time is set aside? I would say just be consistent. Um, for me, I tend to write better late at night because that's when you know my kids are asleep and I don't have too much distraction. Um, whatever you choose to do, just be consistent with it so that you know that, okay, this is the time that I need to go write. This is the time that I need to go do this. It's kind of like a mental clock that you set for yourself. Kind of like, you know, where we know that, okay, seven o'clock, my favorite time, my favorite show is going to go on. So I have to go watch it. So then, you know, that seven o'clock, okay, seven o'clock comes, I have to go write. This is the time where I have to go write. Even if you don't know what you're going to write about, just go plot down. Okay. Um, write about maybe your, what happened to today? You know, what did you do today? Um, another thing too, for me is, you know, for me, I, I always carry a notebook with me wherever I go. Everywhere I go, I have a notebook and a pen with me. So if I happen to see, like maybe on a bus comes by and it has like a phrase and I really like it, I can jot it down. And then later when I come home, I can turn that line into a story. I can just write a poetry about that line. I can write, um, maybe I can have my character say something like that. And this is for those of you who are wanting to become writers to always carry a notebook, carry a pen, and wherever you go, if somebody, if you are standing in line at the store, at the grocery store, and two people are in front of you and they're talking about something and you're listening to their conversation, you can jot it down. Later you come home, you can use that and turn it into a conversation between your two characters. So that's something that um, I, I recommend is just to be consistent. No matter what you do is consistency is always one that will help you really get your story finished. Because you, you have it there, you introduced it, you wrote a beginning, but you just leave it for three weeks, you come back to it, it's like a stranger to you. You don't know what you're doing anymore and you have to go reinvest yourself from the beginning. Okay, how, why did I start the story? Um, why, how did I feel when I began? So if you continue to, con to write on a daily basis, then that project becomes yours and it becomes something personal and you really get to know the character so that at the end of it, when you are finished, that really becomes yours. Yeah, I can understand what you are taking a notebook with your time. For example, my notebook, okay? And I'm sitting on my uh, dining table in here, you know, for me, I'm, because I am a creative, but I'm very forgetful now. Because at the, at my age, you know, I and for two minutes ago I got a really great idea, but as as I sat down, I said, "Where's that idea? When? What was it?" Okay, and and and, and I, I said, "Okay, I think I'm going to interview this person for next week," and then, okay, 
I'm going to write down, but in the next minute, I say, what did I think about it? One minute. And then <laughs> two days, that person appeared again. Mm -hmm. You know, any writer or any people are going to do something like you or what people are interviewing all those people, you need to write down. Even though mm -hmm. I spoke here and talking, I wrote down what I need to ask you because if you ask me, should, what should I ask you before you talking? I don't know either. But I'm, a, I'm just go with the flow. It's more natural than, than, than uh, trying to really tell you, okay, what? This is what we're going to talk about it. So if I start giving you the topic already, it's just the same thing as you, the book. If I start giving you the topic already, then you start formulating the answer. So you may not hear what I want to ask you. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't give out my questions before I start asking them. If it, is, if, if it is their subject of expertise, they don't need me to give them the outline where we should talk about it. I can just ask them, they can just answer it. Okay? So, uh, don't you have any, anything you want to ask? Uh, who are anything? I know you have been very quiet listening to us. Anything you want to add to it? I know you are English major. That's where you graduate, English major. And then you should continue uh, pick up uh, writing some books because there's so much, so much to write about out there for a, a Hmong community. Uh, uh, there's so many things, you know. I, I know that for a fact that writing book will not get you to become a millionaire. Unless uh, you can do something like the, the author for Harry Potter. <laughs> Yeah. But very few people like that. So uh, let's give you a few thoughts to uh, to share on, on the Zoom here. Uh, go ahead, unmute yourself. I wonder. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Let me unmute him, please. Huh? Oh, you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I think he's he's uh, he's pretty. His pictures freeze, so maybe is he. He's okay. You're Hello. Right. Yeah. Okay. You any, any questions? Any suggestion? Any thought? Like I said, uh, you mentioned. Uh, you get did you ask me a question? Yes. Yeah. Did you ask me a question? I asked you a question. Say, uh, uh, you have anything My to ask? My connection is not uh, steady. Your yeah. Your your video is not moving. I can't see, I only see your picture, screenshot. Can you uh, uh, see if you can see you live? My question to you is that you can speak to the audio. Is that, uh, do you have any question for Hua? Any recommendation or any uh, suggestions? Uh, you mentioned that uh, you might want to start writing again or getting to uh, writing your book. So any thought of that, Seth, since you hear what, heard what I uh, what talked about this morning? Okay, sorry about that. My connection wasn't uh, steady, and so I did not hear your question. Did, did you want me to say something? Okay, again, I just want to say it again. Uh, so since you, you heard this morning, and I, I, I know that knowing you, uh, you finished your English major, you got your master's degree in, in English, am I correct? Um, my undergraduate was in U.S. history, and my master's was in Southeast Asian studies. Okay, so that means you in you are in a perfect way to perfect situation to start writing. And yesterday you were mentioned that you were thinking about getting into writing. Uh, after hearing who I talked this morning, uh, do you have any thought, any feedback, anything you would like to answer uh, before we finish our our Zoom talk? I find it very interesting uh, due to the fact that from my understanding is that she's the only uh, or so far that I know uh, writer who has uh, gone to writing stories that are not uh, so true or fictional. Um, and I, I really give her a props for that. She's able to do that and have so much passion uh, in writing in that kind of uh, genre. Um, <clears throat> from myself, in terms of writing, 
I find that if I don't write something that's personal to me, I don't have the passion to write. And so, for example, when I started writing my second script, uh, it took me years to finally finish it last year, but I just never had the time to produce it. But I had no passion uh, to write that script because there's nothing about that script that's related to me or um, anything that I am aware of. And so I just wanted to ask Hua how she's able to get the passion to write something that's not real or things that are fictional. Because when you write something, I feel that if it's passionate, if, if it's something about you or if you're passionate about uh, or something that you have a really deep connection to it, then uh, it, it, it's really easy for you to write. But uh, if you have no connection to it, um, it seems like uh, it's not good or you don't have the passion to finish it. Okay. Thank you, Tong, for your question. Um, that actually has been a lot of question that the, the same question that a lot of people have asked me. And my answer to that is not only just life lessons, but um, when I'm writing, I like to listen to songs. So I play many different kinds of songs. So if I'm writing a story about heartbreak, I will listen to Moshe Friday songs, <laughs> like, you know, on, nonstop. And it's songs about breakup, songs about, you know, losing each other. And if I'm writing a, a story about loss, then I listen to Celtic music. Celtic music is a really, really deep music that really just stirs your mind into it. If you haven't had a chance to listen to it or have ever listened to it, I really do um, recommend that you go and listen to it. It has some really deep, meaningful lyrics. A lot of times when I'm not sure what I'm writing about or if I'm writing about a subject that I've never experienced, I put on a song that has connections to those kind of lyrics. And then when they're singing those lyrics, it turns my gears. And then it spins my gears into thinking, okay, so she's talking about losing this and this and then i turn it into what i have experienced okay what if i were to lose my husband what if i were to lose i put myself into that situation and i say if that was me in that song and i'm crying and i'm saying that i feel like my my leg has been amputated because I've lost my husband. What would I feel? And then I write those feelings out into a subject that I haven't gone into before. And that's how I kind of put my, how I work on those subjects is putting myself into that situation, forcing myself to be in that kind of situation. You have to kind of come out of your comfort zone where you're really comfortable, your life is good, you have a happy family. And then you put yourself outside of it. What if my family wasn't happy? What if I was somebody who wasn't always like this? Another thing too that has helped me is I speak to a lot of people. I ask them to tell me about their stories. Like my mother, she went through multiple marriages before she met my father. You know, but before you met my dad, before you were happy, what was your life like? And then she tells me that, and then I take her story and it becomes mine. So and then you shape, you shape someone else's story to become yours. And even if you have never lived it, someone else you know has. And because that person is really close to you, you're able to make that become yours. So that's my suggestion for you is to um, listen to meaningful lyrics, talk to people who've been through that, have someone share it with you. And another thing is, you know, like what I mentioned before, keep a notebook on hand. Everywhere you go, listen to things that are around you, jot it down, and then make that become yours. And when you, and when you can put yourself in a situation where it can become yours and you can write it, people will believe that it is you. And that's where your passion lies. I, I, so hopefully I, I never, yeah, I I never wrote one before, but I, I, I give you my, my thought about your question is this. Um, you need to, uh, as, a, as somebody who can do a writing like what, even myself, I, I'm starting doing my, my talk show in here is this. Um, 
the reason I did not talk about me, the reason I did not go onto Zoom and talk about myself, because my experience, my knowledge, it's very limited. I give example, if I start talking about a particular project subject, then I can tell you that by the end of the week, I'm done. I'm out of ideas to talk about already. It's the same thing as writing the book. I believe if you start writing about yourself, you don't have much to write about. Okay? So you have to borrow somebody else's story to write. And somebody else's story could be a little child, could be a, a grown up man, but still living in with the parents. And that's you have to you have to look at beyond that what just you because you know you you if you just put that character in yourself, everything say it doesn't connect to me, then if if you want to write toward that direction, then I suggest you go toward the nonfiction, the real story. The way you go interview people, you write their story. So that's a real character right there. So you can have more uh, you can have more value added to the story. Okay, I feel good because I wrote his story or her story. Okay, but when you start writing like who are writing, it's it's it sound like a fiction and nonfiction. It's mixing because if some of them are real. Then you're gonna have to use a lot of imagination, uh, and that when you when when she say re listening to music, if you uh, you have to uh, you have to if you, you you're not sad. If you're going to write the sad part, better listen to Do Not Tolle or something like that. <laughs> um, the coming last part in here. Um, what's your future plan? What's your future plan? My future plan, um, currently I'm working on a monk poetry book called Sake Monya. So it's um, a poetry written and shown the Mongol so yeah um, it's only gonna be it's written completely in fully in Hmong about Itu Leng Tsai Sake Munya um, and it's poetry so it's gonna have haiku it's gonna have written in Gutsia written in Lung Tao um, and all that so it's just short mini uh, poetry about Sake Munya and um, the experiences that you experience as what you learn, what you grow from, what your experiences, and uh, just that's my um, my next plan. And then after that will be my shaman story. So <laughs> <laughs> sounds like sounds you're gonna be very busy. Let me let me just uh, oh say, say a few more things here then. We will uh, finish this up. As I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. that I give you my feedback about sh sh idea, short story. Uh, I believe there are so many untold stories in the refugee camp. The lover story, the untold, the secret lover. I believe that if you find somebody who can willing to come out of the shadow, okay, and, and, and Talk about a secret love, you know. I give you example. It may be true, it may not be true. You know, when we live in the very condensed, uh, condensed density in like Vinay or Nong Kai, do you think that people don't have adultery? Definitely. But I'm sure they do. They never <laughs> told their spouse. Okay, they never told their spouse because you know what? That is just one other story that. The story that I never told people, I'm going to tell you how I find, how I have another lover mm -hmm. in the refugee camp. This is just one another chapter. You can take, you can, you can put it as a fiction story like that. Okay? And I know that in one night there are so many stories, uh, uh, you know, people, a lot of people talk about, I don't know that, but you can make another makeup and story about Junko, but how we met, yeah. not purposely meeting there, but how we met there. Mm -hmm. uh, so many uh, uh, disappointed story, broken heart, suicide, forced marriage, uh, marriage. Well, let's say, well, 
you know, you married and your husband came to America and you're there dreaming. And then uh, even, even by the time your, your, your wife came to America, the wife already had a month pregnant. It's not with the, it's not with the husband. Yeah. Those are unfaithful stories. And I'm sure many of this could throw your imagination go wild already. Oh, Jerry, is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. So these are the stories that uh, it will sell to the mind generation. Okay, you may not make millions, but it's going to sell to mind generation. Oh, yeah, I want to read that story in my life. How's that sound? And they're going to they, they're gonna relive their life, life again in the Bambi those are the stories that uh, if you don't have time, but any one of those who heard our talk today, start write about it. Start write about it because uh, 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 a lot of people are willing to uh, uh, read the books. Uh, they can even do short, me short movies on it. Um, last part about book club. Do you have a book club discussing about your books? Do you do have any book club out there? Um, I don't think so. I don't think there is one. Um, I started one like maybe 10 years ago, but then there was much commitment. So, um, I think we can probably pick one up again. We can do one again and uh, see where it goes from there because now it's, it's easier with, with Zoom nowadays, uh, where you actually had to go meet in order to talk. And so I think that would be something, a good idea to, to do. Yeah. And there'll be there'll be a book club coffee in the morning. You know, we just say, okay, what do you find out? What do you like mo lo love most about this book? So you just have six, seven friends who read your book, and we we make comment. I would love to do that because you know it's 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 something that uh, uh, build build our. Uh, it's more like a social activity, social media activity. Right. You know? I don't. I thought about it, but you know. Let me, because the reason I brought this up because it's, it's kind of a neat idea to uh, have a book club uh, to promote the book and, and uh, uh, but got to have a commitment. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I did once, I, I, I read a book I, last, last semester when I was with um, uh, Oxford University and I read a book about uh, Buddhist nun. It was about three, four hundred pages in the spiritual and the Buddhism, it's, a, it's completely, uh, even though you and I are shaman, I can connect with the Buddhist <laughs> talk. And I say, am I, all, am I all a torn? Am I all this world now? How come I read the book? I don't understand. But somebody who in Buddhist, Buddhism, they understood. Mm -hmm. So when I look at that, look at the book club, I say, oh, this is exactly, that's why they create book club. So that's why I asked you this question. And maybe I will ask if somebody else wanting to start a book club and reading more, more uh, our authors. Uh, uh, so we create, create more, we have more authors coming up. Last, yeah, that would be great. Last word for your tongue, and I have last word for what before we go. Do you have anything? I guess he he's a uh, he step away. So I give you last minutes here, Hua, to uh, and I already talk about the future plans. Ready? Anything you like to add before we finish the rest of? Um, so I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come on today and to kind of discuss, um, you know, the, the journey of writing. And I want to leave everybody with this word, uh, with these words that don't be afraid to write your story. Don't be afraid to continue to work on telling your story because there's a lot of people in this world that you don't know who you are inspiring. You have silent watchers that watch you every day that are inspired by you and your book can make a difference to maybe just one person in the world and even if it's just one person in the world that one person will take whatever you are writing and imply it to their life and make it make their life so much better and everybody has a story to tell and you are in charge of telling your own story so make sure that whatever you are telling and whether it's in life whether it's in book and pages that you leave, you write it with the best and make it become a bestseller, no matter what it is that you do in life and always do it with the best and making sure that you leave a legacy, not just for yourself, but for your children and books and movies and 
anything that you create in your life, those are little things and little gadgets and, and, and uh, mementos that you leave behind for your children to take a look at. And so don't be afraid to write your story. Don't be afraid to share because whatever you're sharing is you are sharing it for somebody who is watching you, maybe it's by someone who is hurt, someone who has not been able to move on. So your story is one that will help someone um, find a better life. Okay. okay. Everyone, thank you for listening to uh, our talk this morning. And uh, I give, Tom, you still there, give your last word before we, 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 we uh, finish today. Tom, you have any last word, Tom? Uh, no, not really, but um, I just wanted to say that it, it is a wonderful way for everyone to be connected through Zoom like this. And I um, want to commend you for giving the opportunity for someone who is a uh, writer to come out to talk about her experience. I believe that there are many writers out there who want to write their stories, but they don't know uh, where to begin or how to start it. I believe that uh, Hua has a pretty good experience and thank you so much Hua for uh, uh, telling us about how to navigate through the process to get books published. And um, <clears throat> if anyone out there who uh, is interested, maybe they could contact you and you can give them tips on how to uh, start the process and how to finally get the book uh, published and get it out there for everyone to read. I know that everyone has a story that's very unique that uh, should be told and I know that there are many kids out there in the uh, educational system who are hungry for books that are written by and about Hmong people. I know that growing up it was hard for me to find books that are written by uh, people who are like me or uh, stories that I could relate to and I mentioned earlier that um, somehow uh, it's hard for me to write fictional stories because uh, even if I finished it uh, I don't have the uh, desire to pick it up and read it because it's not something that I could relate to. And I am sure that um, <clears throat> maybe there are some people out there who feel the same way too, but um, <clears throat> I commend Hua for uh, being able to do that. It's something that uh, a, a different that I have seen from a, a Hmong writer. Uh, most of the writings I have read or for uh, writings uh, from people who have uh, experience or lived through the stories that they wrote. And <clears throat> I would encourage everyone to write. I, if, I can, if I'm a good writer, I will write as much as I can, but um, my English is not so good and my writing is not so good. And so, but for somebody who is like Hua, who uh, maybe grew up in this country uh, almost her life and who's able to write well, I would encourage um, her and others who are like her out there to write so that we will have more books and stories out there for our uh, future generations to read and create our own path and write stories that are correct and uh, the way we want them to be as opposed to having uh, non Hmong writers out there who write things that, that are, uh, are, may not be true and uh, just using us as a gold mine to make more and more money for themselves. So that's my uh, last comment that I want to say to uh, everyone. All right, thank, thank you. you. This, is, this is our last, yeah, yeah. In more, one more word to say, what? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to Tong for, for those words of encouragement. And for um, anybody, if you, if anybody wants to reach out to me, they can. I am more than happy, happy to, to help with just reading anything that you've written or helping you edit or helping you get your foot in the door. I'm, I'm open to that. I may not know everything, but I'm willing to, to help and to help share and uh, help make sure that, you know, you find the right, the right and the proper way to, to go about this. All right. Thank you. And thank you for coming out talk this morning. I'm sure many, many uh, people out there will appreciate your story this morning. Uh, my purpose of bringing you this morning because I wanted to see more authors and more publishers out there. So you give them hope, okay? Give them a, say, yeah, if I can do it, I can do it. English should not be the obstacle to our writing. Even I speak broken English. I write broken English every day. I will not let that stop me from writing whatever. And people correct me every day, including my wife, but I will continue doing it. So uh, thank you for coming out this morning. And... Uh, and uh, this will go to, uh, we will show into our uh, Tomorrow Home channel.
and this will be kept in Montpelier for as long as internet exists. So you can always find this story. So thank you for coming up and have a nice day. Thank you. Yeah.